job. We have to remind ourselves that abuse like that isn't normal. Absolutely, and nor should we accept it as part of political life. What I found shocking when in the Joe Cox Foundation we did some interviews actually with parliamentarians and others was the way in which this has got worse over recent years because of course you know I was a frontline politician for quite a long time I was a minister for 10 years I'm not a big softy and I faced some sort of tough questioning and you know bordering on abuse at times myself but I think it is much worse now and we shouldn't put up with it because it has real life implications. So I guess the question is how do we roll this back? You say it's been going on for some years now, or is the genie out of the bottle and that's it? This is the way things are going to be from now on. No, we just, you know, the point about Jo was that she never said, oh, well, this is something we've got to put up with. You know, she always had a way of responding to it. So I think there's a whole range of things that we can do. Firstly, we need to take individual responsibility for the way in which we talk about people, for remembering that politicians and those involved in elections are human beings, because there's a big element of this, which is, dehumanizing, in censoring ourselves sometimes, in thinking about the fact that, you know, it's easy to be nice to people you agree with. The real challenge in a democracy is to treat people you fundamentally disagree with in a decent way as well. So sometimes that means actually stepping up and calling out abuse against your political opponents. But there are some other things we're doing as well. We're working with the Committee on Standards in Public Life, who produced a report actually commissioned by Theresa May after the 2017 general election um, into this sort of abuse that was growing there. And one of their recommendations was there should be a statement of the sort of behaviour that we expect from political parties and their members. And I'm pleased to say that having produced that, launched it at the end of last year, several political parties have already signed up. The, the Greens have, Plaid have, the SNP have the Liberal Democrats. We're still working on Labour and the Conservatives, but I'm hopeful they'll be signing up soon. And that makes a public statement about what we expect from our politicians. When this was something, you know, some bloke sitting in his mother's spare room in his pants tweeting away, that, that was one thing. But if we're now, if it's now in normal political conversation, what would you say to, to frontline politicians who perhaps stray into this territory to, to bring themselves back? Well, first of all, I don't think the person sitting in his pants should be allowed to be anonymous if what he's doing is crossing the line into hate speech and criminal activity. So social media has made this worse um, for, for sort of politicians and for members of the public. And we need to get rid of that in anonymity and the social media companies need to clamp down harder on it. But to politicians, I say, look, you know, we all come into politics because we want to have a vigorous debate and an argument, you can do that without resorting to personal abuse. In the general election in 2019, uh, we promoted in the Joe Cox Foundation a pledge that uh, the candidates in different constituencies signed up to, cross party saying, look, this is the way that we're going to conduct this election. No, no you know, strong debate, but no personal abuse, we won't sink to that level. And I think making that sort of commitment is something else that's a good idea in the run-up to an election. What are your top tips then? Is it for all the parties to come out and make that pledge to be, to be civil to each other? Yeah, I think it is about civility. It's about respect for the political process. You know, we are, some people don't always think this, but of course, you know, we are lucky to live in a democracy where we can go out safely, not at the moment perhaps, but where we can engage in the democratic process uh, safely. That's a valuable thing. We need to defend it so that we are actually able to have those arguments, those debates to bring forward our passionate views without people feeling, I'm gonna be under attack if I do that. So yes, you know, politicians make a statement about your behavior and about the behavior of those people who support you. And that begins to, you know, it's not the whole answer, but it begins to change the way in which we fight elections. So we can have that passion. We can make the, that call on people to support us. We can criticize our opponents. You know, we're not saying this is about some sort of soft woolly thing. It's actually about defending our ability to have a democratic system in which we can have fundamental arguments, but we can do it in a respectful and a civil way.